Welcome to the Don't Call Me Skinny podcast. I'm your host, Coach Sarah J with CP Fitness. I'm an online nutrition coach and trainer who tells it like it is. I work with women all over the world through my online programs. Each Wednesday, I drop an episode dissecting diet culture norms to give you the facts and reality of nutrition and fitness and how they fit into your world. The current diet culture needs to be revamped, and I'm here to set it straight. My passion is teaching you how to take control over your nutrition, fitness, and overall mindset with my no BS approach. Please remember that this podcast is for educational purposes only and should never be used as medical advice. If you like what you hear today, I'd love for you to leave a review, a rating, share it with a friend, and as always, please keep coming back for more. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's do it. All right, welcome back, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this fantastic hump day. I have a wonderful, incredible special guest with me today. Her name is Coach Hannah Weinberger. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, Sarah. So, so excited to be here. So exciting. All right. So Coach Hannah, I've actually known for quite some time sort of through the internet. And you guys have heard me talk a lot on my show about being connected with um, some different investments that I've made in myself, learning how to be a better coach and whatnot and how to run a better business. And that's where Hannah and I have met. But Hannah, how about you tell me a little bit about you, where you're from, how you got to this place, where you started? Is this something like you always saw you were going to be doing or just somehow kind of land here? So welcome again. And let's hear a little bit about you. That is a loaded question. I feel like my story is very colorful in a sense that, I mean, almost like a lot of people in the health and fitness industry, um, I feel like it's maybe 50-50. I'm not sure the exact statistics on people who actually planned on getting into this industry versus those who kind of just fell into it. But I definitely one of those people who fell into it. I mean, my entire life, I've always been a very active person, or at least so I thought, you know, I was a dancer growing up. I, you know, prioritize my health. I thought I did, you know, sure. but in a sense, I also was, when I was younger, what I'm sure you could probably relate to this. You can just eat whatever you want. And like, yeah. you don't really, get it. you just kind of like can get skirt by with these pop tarts and, you know, just <laughs> a bunch of crap. And like, then your metabolism catches up to you after college and you sit down at your first desk job and you're like, holy shit. Whoops. Like I feel like what is happening here? Yeah. So that's kind of how I really got more serious about it. I got to this place in life where I stopped walking around campus every day. And I wasn't doing the same things that I always did to keep me as active. I still was trying to work out. I was actually like going to these like hit workout, like kickboxing classes, just like really having, and at the time I just didn't have the right mindset and mentality with exercise and food compared to where I am now. And we'll get into that for sure. But I really was like one of those women who was all in or all out. I was like, okay, this week I'm going to be a runner. I am committed. I'm going to like start running marathons. And I was just like going runs every day. And I hated it. I was like, I don't even want to do this. I would run when I was sick. I would run when like, I, like when I would get into a phase of like, okay, it's time to like take my health seriously again. I was like, no junk food, no cookies, like no nothing. Like I'm just going to eat like salads all the time. Like it was extreme. Like, yep. A lot of these women struggle with. So that was where I was at. And I was just not getting anywhere. I was like, why, why am I trying so hard? This feels impossible. Maybe I'm not cut out for being healthy. Maybe like, how do people do this? Like, I just yep. thought it was insane. I was like, there's no way that people enjoy being healthy because I thought it was extreme version of what health actually looks like. And I was like, and I also feel like I'm not getting anywhere. Like I'm also still not happy with my body. Like I feel like I have to work so hard to even get remotely close to a place where I feel comfortable in my skin. And it, it just was like this back and forth. And so finally, um, going into my 25th birthday, I was like, okay, I have been thinking about hiring a personal trainer forever. Like I felt like I needed help, but I like wanted to figure it out myself at the same time, but it like clearly wasn't working. So I was like, okay, that's it. Like I'm doing it for my 25th birthday. And when I mean I hired my first personal trainer, I mean I hired the cheapest person I could find yep. on some like app. You know, I was like, whatever. <laughs> They're going to meet up with me. I was like, give me a meal plan. I'll do whatever it takes. Like, I want to have a six pack by my birthday. Like, and this is three months away. So here I am still doing the extreme thing. But at least that now I have some help and guidance. So I learned a lot through that experience. Um, I did get some results, but obviously in an extreme way, I started to realize very quickly, hey, this isn't sustainable. This isn't enjoyable. Um, and I started to just kind of do a little bit more research on my own and realize that there there really is another way. There really is a way to have a more balanced approach to achieving your goals and enjoying your life. So I did kind of fall into this and I actually just completely quit my job at the time, went back, decided to, to get my CPT. And I was like, that's it. Like, I need to show other women that that doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be extreme. Like you can still live and enjoy your life without, you know, 
sacrificing everything in order to feel healthy. Like it just doesn't have to be that way. And I, and I just felt like this obligation to share it because I see it happening all the time with women that I know and people that I talk to, like the diets that I was trying, the extremes I was going to were learned from people that I had conversations with, from friends, from family. So I knew it was a problem. And I really, I just really felt drawn to it. All I could think about was going to the gym and, and doing this stuff. And I was like, I think I need to quit my job. I think I need to start over because like, this is all I can think about. And I feel like there's definitely more women who need to learn this that are getting all the wrong information. So that's kind of like my like short story of like a way longer story about how I got here. No, I think that's really important because me, similarly to you, landed here. I this If you would have asked me six years ago, this is not wherever I saw myself. I never imagined I would be a personal trainer. Much like you, I was athletic. I was a swimmer. However, maybe unlike you, I could definitely eat cheese pizza, a whole one, and put on weight. So I always had a weight issue as a kid. That was something that I've known for a very, very long time for me. I noticed I was always the bigger person. And so I, like you, it was just like in, innate. Like I was like, this is almost addicting. You can never end process. Like you have to like constantly be working. Yeah. Like, it, like I'm always sacrificing. Like how, how is this like a life that I want to live? <laughs> right. You can't go do this. You can't go do that. You have to say, no, you can never do this thing over here. So when we talk about that, are these the type of women that you serve for your clientele? Tell me a little bit about how... The, the type of women that you kind of call in and what your goal is with your clientele. Yeah, for sure. So I definitely think that, that I work with a lot of women who, who are where I was um, five, six years ago when I was in that place. I just, you know, and to be honest, I'm a really, if, if you follow me on social media, if you get to know me, like I am really one of those people who talk a lot about, you know, body positivity and also just like learning to take care of yourself, not from a perspective of like hating yourself, but really like learning to make yourself healthy, not just like, okay, just to lose weight. So you'll see me talk a lot about that. But to be honest, I started this, like I got here from a place of unhappiness, from a place of feeling really uncomfortable. And so we can't just ignore the fact that women are feeling this way. Like I was in a place where I would cry in the shower and I felt so uncomfortable in my body. I was like, why am I trying so hard? And like, I'm not getting anywhere. And I didn't like the way that I looked in photos like that happens. And that's happening to women every single day. So while I'm all about like helping women to learn to take care of all aspects of their health and learn to really love and embrace their body and, and take care of themselves out of love instead of hate, you know, that sometimes is where it starts, you know, it starts from a place of like, I just don't feel good anymore. Yep. And like, that's where I was. And so that's where a lot of the women that we work with are at. They've tried everything. They've done those extremes. They're like, I need to either like cut out all carbs and never eat a cookie or a sweet again. Or that I'm just never going to be healthy and I might, I might as well not try. So that's what we see a lot of the women that come to us are in that same plastic place. They've tried everything and they have tried diets. They've done all the different things. They think that they can figure it out on their own. They're like, it can't be that hard. It can't be that hard to be healthy, right? Like there's so much information out there. My mom tells me this. My friend tells me that. I just got to listen to everybody and eventually I'll get there. But they're just running in circles. And they're like, I don't understand. I want to be able to go on a vacation and not come back feeling like crap every single time. I want to be able to go into the holidays and not know that I'm just going to feel disgusting and bloated by the end of the year, like going into the new year and I have to start over again. So this is a lot of things I feel like so many women are struggling with. But for, for us specifically, for me, because of my journey, uh, we really attract a lot of women who are like, I want to find that balance in my life. I want to be healthy. Yeah. You know, one of the, my, the green flags for me when I'm talking to a new client is like, yeah, I love to lose weight. I'd love to, you know, achieve this health goal, this fitness goal, whatever, but that's not the most important thing to me. I want to feel better and I want to be able to like, you know, get out of this like hamster wheel almost that I'm stuck in. I'm just like all in or all out mentality. Like I want to be able to run around and chase my kids and, and go to birthday parties and enjoy my life but also know that I'm doing the best to take care of my body. So it's really about helping women find that balance for themselves. I feel like balance is this like coveted thing where a lot of us don't feel like it exists. They're like, okay, like I, I feel like I either have to live a healthy lifestyle or I have to live a fun lifestyle, but there, right. it can be both. It's just kind of tricky to get there. And, that's what we and I think that's a really important piece to point out is the fact that I – serve a lot of the similar type of women, women who have done the yo-yo diets, they've done quote unquote air quotes here, folks, everything and yeah. they can lose the weight, but then they put it back on or they can't even lose the weight or whatever the case that may be. But I think the point that you make here, everybody, oh, I, I need, I need, I need to lose weight. 
I really need to lose weight. I need to lose weight. I need to lose weight. And I don't think women understand how much that actually stresses us out all the time. And so when we go to try to, yeah, yeah. (laughs) yeah. When we go to try to do that thing, that's, you know, that's, is that really the actual thing that we want? Or is the actual thing, like you mentioned, I actually just want to feel good about myself. I want to feel good in my body. I want to feel confident. I don't want to have to start over in the new year and add 10 pounds to my, you know, fucking dumb new year's resolution is not going to work anyways that I've done the last 35 years of my life. So I don't know why I'm going to do it again, but here we go. Um, right. So I think that a lot of people, and I think that's where, you know, this type of coaching, you're not getting that with Weight Watchers. You're not getting this type of coaching with any other, you know, even uh, Beachbody or Op- Optavia or all this other trash that's out there. Nobody's actually, yeah, they want to, they want you to lose weight. It's not coaching. Yeah, like I think <laughs> what a lot of women don't realize until they actually get in and experience coaching with like a real coach for the first time, they think that that's coaching. They think Beachbody, Octavia, they think Weight Watchers, that that's coaching. You know, having someone be like, you know, keep going, Sally. Like, you know, it doesn't matter that you, you know, ate a cookie today. Like, just do better tomorrow. Like, that's not coaching. That's not coaching through real life scenarios and situations. And that's really what it is. And what a lot of women realize when they start working with us, they're like, wow. Like, everyone goes into, like, a signing up for some sort of health or fitness thing thinking, okay, I start on Monday. It's time to, like, get serious again. They just go in, still go in with that mindset of, like, okay, it's going to be all or nothing. Like, I got this this time. And they're really pleasantly surprised and shocked, honestly, when we're like, hey, it's totally okay. Say like you weren't hundred percent perfect in your first week. Like, Hey, what happened? Let's work through this. Like, why was this challenging for you? Oh, you have a vacation coming up. Awesome. I want you to enjoy your vacation. Like, what is that going to look like for you? And like you said, like weight loss is part of a lot of women's goals and that's totally fine. But I think the, the big mistake that's made often is you think that the weight loss is like, what's going to get you to the place that you want to be when there's a lot of other work that needs to be done, which is why for me, um, you know, I do have a health mindset coaching certification. I have a functional nutrition certification. I, I really decided to dive into all these other areas of making sure that we're able to look at each woman who works as like a whole individual, like their entire being, their entire health and say, okay, what are all the factors that are going to help you get to that place where you feel like you can live a healthy, balanced lifestyle, that we can get away from that all or nothing mentality, that we can feel like we're making healthful choices for a healthy lifestyle, but we're also you know, finding that balance within our bodies and within our minds. So there's so much more that goes to like, people think, oh, I'm just going to lose weight and I'm going to finally feel better. But how many times have you lost the weight before and you either gain it back or like you never really feel your best. You're still feeling like crap because you're like, oh, I have to stick to this terrible diet in order to maintain this. And like, my life sucks now. Like, or, I mean, I think, or you realize that weight loss really isn't the thing that actually needs fixing. It's more of the, the brain and learning actually how to actually be happy in your life. And I feel like that's like a, a huge piece that is completely overlooked. Like, and I, and I also feel like a lot of women on this journey, I know for a fact, I specifically, I can speak for myself. Maybe you can chime in on this too, but like you literally change as a person, things that you accepted, things that you tolerated, things that you stood for, you no longer allow those things because they no longer serve your life. And it's not about I'm in a size four pant or I lost 45 pounds. It's literally about fuck you. You no longer serve my life. Yeah, I agree. A hundred percent. I think that, you know, to some extent, I don't want women to think, oh my gosh, like it's not like we're asking you to be a different person, but you do naturally become a different person through deciding and making that stand for yourself. Hey, like, I don't want to be this person anymore. I want to be a person who like, if you want to be a person who feels completely different than you do right now, you're going to have to change the thing. And I think that that's what we have to realize. Like you, you don't have to change your entire life. You're still going to have your kids and your family, and you're still going to go do a lot of these activities, but you have your choices have to change. I think that's the important part there. Like your choices have to now align with the person that you want to be, the way you want to feel, the health that you want to have, the body that you want to have, not just from the way it looks, but like how it operates and functions. And you have to make choices every single day that align with that. And does that mean that those choices are going to look perfect all the time? No, but that does mean that your, your choices every day, like it's an active choice. It's a choice that like either aligns or it doesn't. And it's that awareness that I think a lot of people don't have that you get from coaching, like just gaining some awareness around the choices you're making. You're like, oh shit, like I didn't even realize I was doing that. Like I didn't realize that that choice really wasn't even moving me remotely close to where I wanted to be. So yeah, I definitely think that that's such a huge component of it. And just like you were mentioning before, like with the constant worry and stress about, 
oh, I need to lose weight. I need to lose weight. I need to start another diet. Like we're just constantly stressing ourselves out over it. And that's kind of counterintuitive because we're adding all this stress to our body, adding all this stress to our plate. Like we're making this experience, this process miserable. And that's actually going to make you just retain the weight and make it harder for you to lose it in the first place. Like it really is a like, like a, a full body thing approach that needs to be taken to get you to that place where you're actually feeling your best. That's, that's, I'm huge on that. It's just like, how do you feel? Like, how do you feel? Like, do you want to feel better? It's not just about the way, like you might lose weight to feel better. That might be part of your process, but you want, it's about how you feel. It's not just about like, okay, I need to lose X pounds or I need to look X way. Like, how are you feeling? What choices are you making? And how do those choices make you feel like, does it make you feel good every time you eat like an entire pizza? Probably not. Like you can still enjoy a slice of pizza and you could still feel pretty good, but it's really tuning into how you're feeling. Yep. So it's like two things that you touch on that I literally beat to death. Awareness. Awareness is everything. If you don't have awareness, it's not about it being right or wrong. It's just like, oh, that is actually the thing. Okay. Now that I know that this is the thing, now what do I do with it? It has nothing to do with it being like, okay, yeah, I'm going to go eat this, I don't know, piece of cake, even though I already had a piece of cake. Okay, but am I aware about what I'm doing or am I just doing? Like, it's not the same. If more people had awareness, like that would just change so many lives in itself. And I think that there's so many of us women, especially like, honestly, everybody, we're so out of touch with our bodies. And that's the biggest problem here. That's where, that's how a lot of these women that are listening right now or who we serve, that's how you get to the place you're at right now because you're not in touch with your body. You're just going through the motions. Oh, I need to start a diet. I need to do this thing. Like, are you actually tuning into your body? And you can't ever get to a place where you feel balanced internally, like from the inside, like your body's in a balanced, healthy place. You're not going to get there. And you're also not going to have balance in your life. If you aren't in tune and in touch with your body and you have awareness around what choices you're making and how you're feeling. And that's easier said than done. It really is. So I, totally feel for women who are like, Oh, like, yeah, that makes so much sense. I really feel like I am just going through the motions. I feel for you. I get it. Like I was there for a really long time and by no means am I perfect. And in this place where like, I just have it all figured out every day I'm learning. And that's the important part. This is a constant process of like, you might reach your weight loss goal. Great. Now you have to focus on continuing the healthy habits and continuing to do the things and live the healthy lifestyle. Like it's, it's forever ongoing. Like we're always learning. And the quicker you realize and accept that, the quicker you realize, hey, like I need to learn and be aware and be in tune and in touch with myself. And it's not just going to be like a one time thing. It's going to be a constant process. The quicker you're going to get to a place where you really do feel your best and you're, you're actually staying there and you're not just yep. going back to where you started. Well, and I think, you know, you mentioned the fact that like even us, like, I mean, that's why I have a coach. Why? Well, what happened to me? I started building a business. I was holding myself in an office. I was eating, starting to eat like shit. I was starting to just move, move through the motions and there was no intention. There was zero intention about what I was doing. What a great word. Yeah. Yeah. Like the minute you start moving on autopilot yep. and to some extent, I think it is important to like get some healthy habits into autopilot, right? Like that's where sure. habits, where habits are. They are things that you just do naturally on autopilot, but you have to get to that place where the healthy choices are on autopilot. It takes a lot of work and you have to like do the work to maintain them, to keep them healthy habits. Cause it's really easy to fall back into. And then all of a sudden replace the healthy habits with autopilot, like negative habits. Like you said, like, Oh, stress is taking over work is taking over and that's so many women and not just us that are starting every woman is like riddled with stress and they think it doesn't matter and once you have the awareness about how much that is truly impacting your body like oh my god holy crap like I've I've really been letting this take over my life and and that's where you have that awareness again you can start moving in the right direction yeah and I think too like you know people you know like like specifically us as coaches it would, it was a lot easier for me to see when this was starting to happen right now. This has been going on for me, like probably the last five to 10 weeks or so. And it was finally like, okay, like I need somebody to actually say that you need to go do X, Y, Z. You know, already know what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And yeah. It, it, again, it's awareness. So I'm aware that I have a problem and now I'm doing something actively. I'm taking exactly. action to go get the help that I, even me as a coach, even you as a coach, I know you've had other coaches. 
you can take that action because you have awareness of what's happening now. Correct. And that's why I'm huge on explaining to, to our clients like, hey, I don't want you to have to feel like you have to rely on a coach forever, but I do want you to get to a place where you have that awareness to be like, huh, I've been feeling kind of like I'm, I'm going backwards on my progress lately. Like I'm not feeling super good. I'm feeling kind of like, you know, yucky. Like I'm just not feeling great. What's changed? Like you need to have that ability to tap in and say, hey, what am I doing differently lately? And like, can you have the awareness to point that out and say, okay, you know what? I've been really stressed this week with work and I definitely have been eating out more because I just haven't had time to cook. And it makes sense. Like now I know why I have been feeling crappy. All I have to do is go back to some of those things that I was doing before. I need to like tap back into like, all right, stress is taking over. What do I need to do to reduce my stress? I need to cook some meals at home. Like going back to your non-negotiables essentially of like, what things do you know you need to do? And do you have the ability to be aware when you stop doing them? Because when you start to feel like crap, so many people are quick to be like, oh my God, like I need to start a diet. Like I just feel terrible. Like I need to, you know, hire a coach immediately. And it's like, just take a minute to pause and be like, how did I get here? Like why, what's changed over like the, the recent weeks or months? How did I get here? What do I just need to like, you know, kind of just start going and, and adjusting? Yeah. Like you just said, take a pause. If you listen to what I said prior, I've been in this place for five to 10 weeks, folks. This isn't like, I didn't just go out yesterday and decide, well, it's time to hire a coach because I'm feeling like shit all of a sudden again. And I know I'm not doing what I'm supposed to. It was like, okay. Clatter. Yeah. 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 Am I able to correct this on my own doing what I know I'm supposed to do? No. Why? Because I'm just holding myself up in my office and I don't have somebody literally saying, get your fucking ass out of the office and do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And that was important. You identified, Hey, what what do I need right now? Like I'm juggling all these other things. And that's what I think women have to understand as well. Like as much as like what we really preach is like, Hey, our goal for our clients is to get to, to a place where you don't ever need us again. Like hypothetically, you should have the tools and skills to be able to maintain, to be able to have the awareness, to make the pivot, to go back. But that doesn't mean that some women still don't thrive still having that coach and accountability partner. Like some people need that. Like that's really helpful for your busy, stressful lifestyle to have someone to go to and like keep you organized and be like, okay, hey, you got to do this. Like they just kind of keep you on task. Doesn't mean that you're not capable on your own, especially after some point in your journey. Like you could totally do this without help. Sarah, but you realize, hey, I need, I need someone to kick me in the butt. Like I'm juggling a bajillion other things and I know I'm going to feel better when I have someone just checking in on me. And I think that's the important, like there's no shame in having a coach forever. If you feel like that's like just something that adds value to your life, but you also can know that like, you don't have to, you don't have to rely on someone forever, but like, it's all about like where you're at in life. Right. And that's something I always talk about. Like my job is to literally educate you and teach you. So you have these tools that you don't need me. Now, if you as a person decide, I still want this in my life because this makes sense for me. That's different than I don't know what the fuck I'm doing once I'm no longer coaching with you. You know, those are not like the same things. And I think it all comes back to mindset and, and how you go into it, just, just like a weight loss journey, right? Like, what's your mindset going into it? Is it like, I need to get this weight off as quickly as possible, or I'm actually going to come into this and do this the right way and learn throughout the process and make sure that I'm getting something out of it. Because my goal is not to be in this place forever. Like, I want to get out of this place and I want to have the awareness and I want to have the tools that I need to be able to take care of myself. But a lot of women still go in, to even working with a coach for the wrong reasons. They just want the quick weight loss and they just don't, they are not even trying to learn throughout the process. And that's where a lot of women do fail and come back and still need coaching because they aren't actually learning something along the way. They're like, okay, this coach is going to help me lose the weight as quickly as possible. And that's all they're hyper-focused on Mm -hmm. instead of being like, okay, I need to learn to have awareness. Okay. I need to learn to like understand the process and the things that I'm doing. That's the way that you get to that point. So it's really what you make it. And then once you get to that place, then you can decide, hey, like, does it serve me to just have this coach there to just like kind of hold me accountable and, and just support me? Because there's multiple things that us as coaches can contribute and give to women. I think it's accountability, number one. Always. You know, somebody's there to make sure you're doing the things. I think that's what a lot of us struggle with because who's going to know if you don't have an accountability partner that like, oh, I said I was going to go to the gym today, but I'll just wait till tomorrow and wait till tomorrow and wait till tomorrow. <laughs> no one's going to know. Your husband ain't going to hold you accountable. Like it it ain't going to work. You already know that. So like hiring someone to do that, that's step one. But then also, obviously, as coaches, we have years and years of experience and certifications and hours we put into our education and working with other clients. We have the information that you don't have. And we have we have the tools to help you get to where you want to go. But we're also going to teach you how you're doing that along the way. So there's two components of what like coaching can really contribute, coaching you through those real life scenarios and holding you accountable. 
For sure, for sure. So let's talk about this 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 buzzword that we hear. Specifically, you've you've mentioned it. I talk a lot about it, but that B of balance, that B word, that balance. Yeah. yeah. What exactly does that look like? Because we've kind of talked a little bit about you have like I feel like you have like your two extremes where you're like you have the people that are like, especially now, eat you know, pizza, cookies, and drink wine every day and still lose weight. And I'm like, I don't really think that's real, but, um, that, that's not balance really right. to me. Yeah. Um, I used to be that way. I came into this space when it was like IFFYM, you know, if it fits in your macros, which for me yep. was like wonderful because I came from a Weight Watchers perspective where it's right. like, if it fits in your points, like who cares about the food quality? IFFYM, you know, who cares about the food quality, but this blizzard yep. was 12 and a half points and I just ate half my points in a blizzard. No big fucking deal. And then you eat like lettuce for the rest of the day. So <laughs> right. like, that's all yeah. yeah, that's great I'm balance. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I came from the same, the same place. You know, when I first got into this, like, because like I mentioned previously, like I worked with this personal trainer who put me on a meal plan and that was one end of the extremes, right? I was doing this bodybuilder meal plan for the, for the average general population girl who just wanted to look good by her 25th birthday. I, but I went in and I said, Hey, I'll do whatever it takes. <laughs> so she said, okay, here's your meal plan. Here's your tilapia and asparagus and Ew. rice. And, um, you can have 10 almonds. Like it was legitimately ridiculous. And I was like, I can't, I was just thinking to myself, I can't do this for the rest of my life. And so I started doing my own research and I stumbled across IIFYM. I was like, oh my God, what is this macros thing? Because she would put the macros on my meal plan, but I didn't know what it meant. So I did my own research and I was like, huh, I think, I think if I just stick to these numbers and I eat whatever I want, like, I think I can still, you know, make progress. So I saw that that was possible. And I was like, oh my God, like this, this girl, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Like you can eat whatever. I don't eat almonds. Like I can eat candy. Cause I would ask her, Hey, you know, so-and-so coach, like, can I, um, order this sweet item. She was like, no, we really don't want to like be eating that. So it really was one end of the extreme. And it kind of led me into the other end where I was like, oh my God, like I'm seeing this life that I could really like eat pizza and cookies and, and blah, blah, blah. So that was like really what I was about in the beginning. I was an IIFYM, if it yep. fits your macros coach. I was out there saying, I can help you lose weight um, eating pizza and candy and cookies and blah, blah, blah. Yep. And I was posting pictures of me eating cookies all the time because it was great. And, and you can have this amazing life. But then I realized that ain't it because you're absolutely right. Like you can't be the healthiest version of yourself only eating pizza and cookies. And that's the only thing that fits your macros. You should not be doing that. And so the way we approach things as clients now is completely different. You know, yes, I am going to be that coach that says, yes, you know what, Sarah, it is possible for you to have a slice of pizza and still reach your weight loss goals. Like, isn't that awesome? Like you don't have to restrict foods. We, we don't have to look at foods as good and bad. Like there's a balance of all foods that can fit in your diet. But you know what, Sarah, at the same time, it's really important that we do pay attention to the quality of the foods that we're putting into our body because that's just going to help you feel your best. Like eating an entire pizza and that fills your entire calories for the day is going to make you feel a whole lot different than actually eating foods that are going to like provide nutrients to your body and allow it to function well and function mm -hmm. optimally. Yep. Give you energy, like give you vitamins and minerals. Everybody knows that. Everyone knows there's a very visible difference in how you feel. So I really do like kind of hate sometimes that there's still these people in the fitness space, the health space that are so like, oh, like shut up about like the, um, you know, nutrients. Like it doesn't matter. Just like, you know, if, if it's your macros, like I get that, that you're still stuck in that mindset, but that's truly not it. If you're here in the health and fitness space and you're here to like help promote health for people, that's not the way to do it. It's about finding balance. So what does balance really mean? I think a lot of people mistakenly use that word they're like oh like it's all about balance right like you know balance 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 and that's their excuse they use balance as an excuse for making poor choices that don't align with their health and they're like oh you know like I'm eating pizza for dinner hashtag balance okay cool but then they do the same thing the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day and every single day and then like maybe for the next meal they're like oh you know what like hashtag balance like I'm gonna have a cookie here but I had pizza for dinner and like that's fine they just like keep piling it on top and that becomes their balance and then you're going to the complete opposite extreme there's no balance there there's no balance the choices need to be like most of the time it's about what you do most of the time that's going to affect how you feel the choices most of the time do need to align with like hey I you want to live a healthy lifestyle you want to have a healthy body make choices most of the time that are going to align with that and and part of that is having a healthy mind and allowing yourself 
to enjoy those treats in moderation. So it's really more like balance and moderation, but like, what is moderation actually? Like moderation is not like, you know, every single day I have pizza. That's not moderation either. So it really is about finding, and balance looks different for everybody. I think that's important to say. And one day, right? Like you might have your kid's birthday party. And like that day might just, you might eat a bunch of not nutritious food the entire day. Maybe you just have an entire day where just you eat cake and cookies and pizza and whatever. It is what it is. It's your ability to go back the next day and be like, you know what? Okay, cool. That was a day. No big deal. Like, I'm not going to beat myself up over it. I know it's not going to like ruin my health. I know that it wasn't the best choices and I'm going to reflect on how I feel, right? Like maybe I don't feel super good the next day. I feel kind of crappy, but the next day I'm going to go back to what I do most of the time that makes me feel good. Not because I felt bad about what I ate yesterday, but because I made a mental note and I said, Hey, that didn't make me feel super good. I know that when I do these other things, I feel great. I know these serve my body a lot better. So I'm just going to get back to doing that most of the time. So I think for, for me, balance is what you do most of the time is what's going to be reflected in how you feel and how your body functions. You can have the pizza and cookies and blah, 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 but not all the time. And you have to really decide every single day. Like, again, it's that active choice of like, what is serving the body and the life that I, that I want to have and that I want to live. And, is that like allowing myself to eat pizza every single day? Like some people do have to go through a phase where they, they go through that and they say, okay, I have to like mentally, like I'm really struggling with my relationship with food. And that might look like allowing yourself to just indulge a little bit more and prove to yourself like, Hey, this is okay. But I really still do like have a hard time with that because I think there is a better way to go about it and say like, Hey, like we don't have to go all in or all out and go to this extreme of like, proving to ourselves that we can eat cookies every single day. Like, but I had to go through that. Like I did, especially I came from the bodybuilding world where I was like, you know, Oh, I can eat cookies every single day and do this bodybuilding thing. And then like, after the fact I was binging on cookies yeah. and that's not healthy either, but I had to go through that phase and be like, man, I feel like crap. I really don't like how I feel doing this to be like, I don't think that I should be doing this every day. Like, even if it does fit my macros, I think I do need to like, and I immediately obviously noticed the difference when I wasn't eating cookies every single day and right. how I felt. Yep. And that was a really big eye opener to be like, okay, I can have a cookie sometimes, but most of the time I'm going to make these choices. And now, now I feel like it's so much easier for me to on a daily basis, make a choice that's, Hey, this makes me feel good. And sometimes I might, you know, have an ice cream or a cookie or whatever, but honestly, sometimes I choose not to because I'm like, eh, it's not going to make me feel good. I don't even really want it. So like, yep. I feel like it takes time to get to that place. But balance is not an excuse. Balance is what you do most of the time and understanding that's going to affect how you feel, but also like having that, that ability to say, hey, this is okay. Like I'm not doing this because it's bad or like I'm not going to go to one extreme or the other. It's just like finding that it's really hard. It really is hard to describe balance because it's a little different for everyone. It's all based on your personal experiences. But that was kind of what it, what it is for me and how I kind of teach it to my clients as well. Yeah. So I think, you know, another thing to take away from this is something that I talk about is when we're talking about like, notice the, the foods that we are speaking about when we talk about quote unquote. Good versus bad. Correct. And so we (laughs) give food power over us, right? I can't have the pizza because it's bad. I can't eat the cookies because they're bad. I can't have the, this because it's bad. The ice cream is bad. Correct. There isn't like good food and bad food. And once we start labeling this shit as good and bad, then it has the power to make us feel certain ways about. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we start correlating how we feel with the food that we're eating because we gave the food some type of thing that they don't even have because that's what, you know, society says, or it's what we hear people talk about. So I know like for me, a lot of it is Uh, we work with pulling away that power, food, stop letting power. And I know it's easy to say, stop letting power have, or stop letting food have power over you, but you have to really work on like not allowing it to control the feelings. And that's removing the power that the food that you're giving the food essentially. Absolutely. Yeah. And I totally agree with that. And language is so powerful too, how we talk about things. And I think it's especially when it relates to food. So if, if instead we can and stop looking at things that's good and bad and say like, Hey, how does this make me feel? Like not in, in terms of like, um, not in terms of like, oh, is this a good choice or a bad choice? I'm not talking about like, um, is this something that's going to make me feel bad because I made that choice? How does it make you feel like in your body? Do you feel good or do you feel bloated? Do you feel yucky? Do you feel like, how does it make you feel? And also, is it nutritious or is it like less nutritious? 
And, and that's okay either way. It's not good or bad. It's just like having that awareness of like, hey, what was this food? It was okay. It was a vegetable. And I actually felt really good after I ate it. Okay. And I had this pizza and it was delicious. But like, I didn't feel super great afterwards. Like I ran to the bathroom and like, it was just kind of like shitting my pants. Like, <laughs> it went really right like, out. <laughs> like, out. You know, I can still have that pizza. I have the choice to make to enjoy pizza. But like, I know that it's not going to make me feel so, super good after. So yeah, I think that's so, so important. Like language is so powerful in how we talk about things. And I talk about that all the time too. Like for a while I was somebody and you might even be familiar with like the 80, 20 rule, something that was brought I was gonna to my ask, I was like, going to ask about this. How you feel yeah, about this. Yeah. Yep. So I, it was really, I gained some awareness that maybe we shouldn't be calling it a rule. Maybe we shouldn't be calling it the 80, 20 rule because then a lot of us do get hyper fixated on like, am I within the rule? Am I is it exactly 80% and 20%? I don't think that's what it's about. I think it's about like your choices overall. So I, I refer to it as more of like a guideline, like 80, 20 guideline, like, and it's more like an overarching big picture. Like let's zoom out. Because let's not look at it on like, oh my God, is my day perfectly 80-20? Because then that's getting us in the mindset that like every day I should have 20% of like fun foods and like 80% of like, you know, healthy foods. And then we just like overthink this. Instead, you should zoom out and say like, hey, what am I doing most of the time? And what am I doing some of the time? Mm -hmm. Like, am I sometimes allowing myself to enjoy these more like indulgent, less nutritious things without guilt? Like, cool, fine. Like that's my my 20%, maybe it's 10% for some people, maybe it's 30, maybe it fluctuates based on the day and the month and the week. But most of the time, most of the time I wake up every single day and I make choices that I know are going to make me feel good that are going to serve my body. It's about what you're doing most of the time. So yeah. I'm less like, hey, let's, let's abide by this 80-20 rule. I think it's a good guideline to like give someone a visual, like some people really do, it helps them see like, okay, if you're looking at a pie chart, like most of the time you should be eating nutrition foods, but sometimes if we don't, it's okay. So sometimes that can be really helpful, but I try to, I've learned and I've gained the awareness to shift away from calling it a rule because even that can, like, again, language is so powerful. Like, let's really think about how we're, we're approaching that. Yeah. Cause I'm like your, your super stereotypical rule follower. That is me like to a T. Like if you tell me that this is a rule, I'm like, we have to follow the rule. I'm going to follow it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's, that's, so I, yeah, I abide by that like hardcore it's that so would. Gray area. And I think that that's what a lot of us struggle with because we want it to be clear. We want it to be black or white. We want it to be yes or no. We want it to be good or bad. We want that. And a lot of women struggle with that when, when they come in to coach with us and we're like, hey, that's okay. It depends. Sometimes like it, it's all really just so flexible. And I think that's what we have to like be okay with is like, you know, getting away from rules. But that, you know, some people do need rules to give them direction. So it's really, again, about finding that balance for yourself. Well, and again, stating that this is not the same for everybody. Everybody's version of this journey is going to be different because like me, I'm a rule follower. So if you tell me like this, I'm going to follow it very black and white where somebody else may be like, okay, so is there like flexibility within that rule? Or like, I'm going to push this rule to the limit. Or you. And that's so important too. And that's the beauty of coaching as well, right? Like you can check in with somebody and say, Hey, like, what do you need to feel mentally healthy? You know, obviously like we want to make sure we're making choices that are going to allow you to be physically healthy, but like, how are you feeling mentally about this? Like does having this hard, like, are you using this hard and fast rule? Like, is that actually becoming unhealthy for you? And then we can kind of tap into like, okay, what's a different approach here? So that's, again, the beauty of coaching is like working with the individual to say like, Hey, what do you need here? Like, do you need some like more clear guidelines? Or do you like, is this, do you need more flexibility and everybody's so different on what's going to affect them mentally and physically in terms of their health? Yeah. And so I think too, part of this is when we're talking about every, everybody wants the answer. They want yes or no. They want good or bad. They want, am I supposed to do this thing over here? Right. I feel like, you know, <laughs> being in, in our space that we are in, I got caught up in this myself, you know, hiring a mentor for my own business where I was just told you have to do this thing X, Y, Z. And now I'm with a mentor that's like, well, how do you feel about that? I don't know how I feel about that. I've never known how to feel about that. And I feel I like never had opportunity to feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never had opportunity to, to express anything. So I feel like in it's very parallel to our clients or even women in this space because it's like, well, they don't know if they're supposed to eat pizza because they've just been told that if you're on a diet, you can't eat that. Or if you're on this thing, you can't do that. So when they come to me, like 
Prime example, I had a client that was in a pretty nasty car accident and she's healing, right? The first thing she does is say, well, I need to lower my calories, right? Because I'm not moving my body as much. Well, actually your body needs to heal. We shouldn't even be trying to lose weight right now. But the first thing I did was flip it. Instead of giving her the answer, it was like, okay, well, let's consider what is going to actually help our body heal. What do you think that's going to be? What do you think? Yeah. Like, let's have a conversation about this. <laughs> right. And man, that blows some minds and really frustrates some people. I find someone are like, can't you just tell me? Like, just give me the answer. That's me. And I'm like, I get it. Listen, I want to give you the answer. Like, that's what you hired me for. But like, I want you to build that self-efficacy, that confidence to like understand like the choices you're making. And like, let's, let's think about this a little bit. Like, like let's use our brains and be like, hey, does this make sense? Like, why? I love that you said that. That's so, so important because I've definitely had clients who have like, they've almost not liked that when I'm like, Hey, let's have a, let's have a conversation. They just want you to hand them. Here's the meal plan. Here's the thing. Do this. And I get it. I get it. Some people need to tell me what to do, but that's, I'm sorry, but I might not be able to help you if that's what you're looking for, because I right. really want you to actually feel confident in the choices you're making. Right. And I think, you know, that's, that was me. That was me in my new mentor space. I w- when she would just push back and say, well, what do you think? What do you feel? I'm like, I don't like that. So I don't, yeah. I don't like that. Please just tell me I've always been told. And I think that in this process, most women have always just been told. So when you go to ask them, they're like, I don't fucking know, but here's the thing. This is why this is so important in our space. That is how you're going to learn when you don't have us holding your hand. When you, you're going to come back to that moment and be like, okay, that one time when I went to coach. Yeah, it, it's going to change. It's a game changer. You know, I had recently a client that's been working with me about four-ish months. And she was a very, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. That's how she's always had a, had a weight loss success is somebody just telling her what to do. Don't eat this, eat that, do this, don't do that. Okay. And then it got to a point where she was like, man, I'm really stressed this week. So I'm just going to let you know, I'm not tracking this weekend because I've had a really stressed. Yeah. I was like winning. And most people, right. You would think, oh my God, she's not tracking her food. Oh my God. She's going to, she's going to gain weight. She's going to be, no, because you see tracking your food is another stressor. And so when you're already stressed and then you're worried about hitting all of your macros and you're worried about this thing, something I always talk about is learn what you can scrape off your plate, but still move the needle. How can we dial it back? How can we, yep. you know, what can I take off my plate in the moment? Sometimes exactly like you said, from the outside, like the average coach would be like, oh my God, Sarah, why would you do that? Why would you stop tracking your food this week? Like it doesn't matter. But a coach like us might say, hey, Sarah, like that's, I'm so glad you made that decision. Like, how can we reflect on this? Like, what made your week stressful? Like, is there anything we can do for the future to make you feel more prepared so that you can continue to track to maybe like 50 50? Like, it, and as long as you know that the, how this decision is or isn't going to affect your progress, and mentally we're making some progress on being able to make those empowered choices for ourselves, like, that's a win win all around. And like you said before, like, Yes, we, there is women who struggle with this. Like even you said, like, I, I just want them to tell you what to do. Yeah. And I get it completely. But my, my line of thinking is if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. Correct. And so if you find yourself in a situation where you're working with a coach, like even us working with mentors, uh, maybe you're a client working with a nutrition coach for the first time. And you're like, well, there's a difference between, oh my gosh, like, I just don't agree with this. Like that's different than saying, hey, this makes me feel a little uncomfy. Like I'm not used to this. Like I'm not used to someone pushing me back and asking me questions and asking me to think for myself. If that feels a little uncomfortable for you, reflect on that. Like have that moment of awareness and say like, this might actually be a good thing. This is actually going to teach me, allow me to grow. And this is what's actually going to allow me to change. This is what's going to make this different instead of just the other diets I've done before. I would follow the plan or ate the snacks or whatever. I actually have some awareness and some knowledge now and I was pushed a little bit and it was a little bit harder because of that. Like it wasn't just an easy process, but it challenged me and that allowed you to truly change your lifestyle and your body and, and make it flat. And I think that that's the key. I think if it feels the same that it has always felt, it's probably going to do the same thing. You're going to get the same result that you've always gotten. When it exactly. starts to feel a little bit ick, that's probably yeah. the sweet spot, the sweet sauce that you want to be start, you know, that you want to be in. Like, I yeah. know that's how it is for me. Being in this space, in this business space, it feels ick for me because I'm like, I'm having to literally make my own decisions now and I don't like it. And it feels yeah. ick, which is exactly why it's exactly where I need to be. Exactly. Yep. 
And, you know, we want to, like, I think a lot of times, like, you feel that kind of discomfort in the beginning. But then once you push past that, and you're like, oh, you know what, it actually becomes easy. After that, you're like, wow, you know what, this is actually what I needed all along. I've actually gained the knowledge and the awareness that I needed. And now this feels easy instead of like, okay, yeah, it was clear as black and white, follow this meal plan, eat these things, but I was miserable. Yep. Now I, I have some knowledge and awareness. And it's actually a much more enjoyable process. I just had to push and challenge myself to see it a little bit differently. Yeah, it's it's and it is uncomfortable. Like, you know, and, and the 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 funnier thing is, like I said, when you start feeling that ick spot, it and it starts to feel like, uh when you're mentioning like, oh, when you start pushing past that, it starts to become really empowering. It starts yeah. to become like, oh, I made that choice and look at the outcome of that choice. And I did that. It, it, it wasn't, I didn't ask somebody else for permission. I didn't, I didn't tell myself you I can't. Yeah. yeah. It becomes empowering because you, you decided, you know, like this person I, made the choice to come to me and say, she didn't say, I'm really stressed. Do you think it's okay if I don't track? You know, it wasn't a question. It was just like, exactly. yeah, I'm not tracking. Yeah. I'm not tracking this weekend. And, okay. you're, and she felt good about that. And she, and I think she could express why. Yeah. She felt like she understood why she felt empowered in making that choice for herself. And that's huge. And I think that's what so many women are missing and lacking. And that's all you really need is to get to that place where you feel empowered to make choices, but it might take a little bit of time to get there. It might take some, some coach challenging you. It might take you rewiring the way that you think. But once you can feel empowered in your choices, that's how you're going to find this balance thing that you're looking for. You're like, I just, oh, I just wish I didn't have to sit to, stick to this strict diet. I wish I could just go on a vacation and not worry about my diet. You can get to that place. Mm -hmm. You can get to this balanced place, but you have to learn how to make decisions for yourself and have awareness around the choices that you're making and feel like, okay, I'm going to make this choice because of this. This makes sense to me. This feels good for me. And now we've made an empowered choice and you can move forward with that instead of just like waffling back and forth between, was that a good choice? Was it a bad choice? Like it was pizza, so it was bad, right? Like I shouldn't have eaten it. Instead, it's like, okay, this. I made this empowered choice because I know this is what's going to make me feel good in the moment. Yeah. And it's funny that you say this too, because this is my client that literally went on vacation who was extremely nervous. And I just said, stick to your non-negotiables, which she did. Right. And she did very well. And she came back and she lost weight. Yeah. Because she took that stress off of herself. Instead of putting these, this pressure on herself to be like, oh, I have to be perfect on this vacation. I have to do all these things, right? I'm just going to go enjoy my vacation. I know how to make choices that feel good for me. And and when you know how to do that, when you know how to make choices that feel good for you, it all falls into place a whole lot easier. Yeah. There's going to be times in your journey. I've had to go through a lot more strict or, you know, committed time periods. Like I had to work through a gut health protocol. I had to do these things that required a little bit more discipline. But besides that stuff, like when you're, when you're really just looking at the big picture, when you're like getting out of that phase of, okay, maybe in your fat loss phase, you have to be a little bit more dedicated. Once you get out of that and you're like, okay, I'm just learning how to live healthy. Like it's so possible to just be like, okay, just make choices. I know feel good for me. Like, I know this is going to make me feel good. If you can just op your, operate that way every single day on, Hey, I'm going to wake up today and make a choice that makes me feel good it's going to get a whole lot easier for you to maintain weight loss, to maintain a healthy body, to maintain a healthy lifestyle, to have balance for yourself because you're going based on feeling and you're not going based on like, okay, you know, is this good or bad? Like, should I do this? Shouldn't I do this? Like, what am I supposed to do? What feels good for you? Yeah. And I think, you know, when we start making this one choice, you pick one choice and it just a catalyst and something that I always talk about, and we've talked a lot about it today, that people come weight loss, weight loss, weight loss, weight loss. Weight loss is a cattle, or excuse me, a side effect. It's a side effect of making choices that make you feel good. Yep. That's all yep. that is. It's so true. When you're making, and, and that's how people get to the place where they want to lose weight, right? Like, how did you get here? You made a bunch of choices that did not align with having a healthy body, so this is how you got to this place. So can we, like, untangle that? And now start making better choices. And that's just exactly going to be a, a, a side effect of making the right choices for yourself. And if you focus on, on, on the habits, the choices that you're making that are going to allow you to lose the weight, instead of just the weight loss in itself, like that being the only goal, I just need to lose the weight, lose the weight, lose the weight. How? What are the things you need to do to support a healthy body? If you focus on that stuff, that's going to make 
makes you less likely to gain the weight back because now you have the habits and you're making the right choices on a consistent daily basis. Yep. That's a hundred percent. hundred percent. I don't, yeah. did we cover everything? Do we, do we, anything? We I, I feel like we did. I feel like we <laughs> talked about a lot of stuff today. Like just r- ran the gamut a little bit. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. So all of Hannah's information is going to be linked into the show notes. It's a little easier for me just to have my people go there to get it instead of trying to spell it and all sorts of stuff here. So if you are interested in following her on social media, all of her stuff's going to be in the show notes. And I just want to say thank you so much for joining me today. Um, this is really good because I know like I have a lot of crazy busy moms that, that listen and follow and that's, I tend to work with moms. And so I think this is going to be really good for them to hear what balance really looks like, what it feels like and get it, you know, again, starting with that one decision, just one. Otherwise I have, I got nothing left. You guys make sure that you click the link in the show notes. If you're interested in following me, joining up on that email, um, subscribing list as well as interested in coaching one-on-one, all that stuff's linked in the show notes. But again, um, coach Hannah stuff is all going to be there. So maybe again, you don't listen to me or you listen to me, but you don't like me. Check her out. You may be interested in working with her. She's amazing. So I just want to say thank you again and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate your time. And if you like what you heard, please be sure to screenshot and share it with others who may enjoy it too. Don't forget to click the link in the show notes to see the ways that we can work together to start your journey. Always remember that every day is a new day to do better, be better, and begin again.